Hi, my name is Ian Duncan, and I am the author of Scheme for Max. Scheme for Max is an open source extension to the Max audio programming platform, allowing you to script and live code Max in S7 Scheme Lisp. Now, this video is in response to a question from composer Michael Norris about how one could easily apply envelopes to audio in buffers. I thought this would be a perfect example for the Scheme for Max cookbook and for a tutorial video. So here we are. This video is also accompanied by the code and the Max patch in the Scheme for Max cookbook repository, which you can find in the links. All right, let's take a look at it. So we have here our Max patch. It's pretty straightforward. We have a buffer. The buffer has a name, buff-1, 250 samples, and one channel. So we'll start with it clear. We have a scheme for max object. That's what the s object is. And it has loaded the file apply fades.scheme, which I have open over on the right. The reset button resets the interpreter. I have a receive object here and an accompanying send. And that's used for us to send messages to the interpreter. And if you haven't taken a look at scheme for max before, one of the things it allows you to do is put scheme code directly into messages and send those to the S4M object to have them executed. So that's what we're doing here. I've defined a couple of functions, one for filling a sign and one for applying the envelope. Now, of course, there are functions already built into Max for filling a buffer with a sign, but I figured this would be also be an interesting example. So we'll run that one first. Fill sign takes a buffer name, an amplitude, a frequency, and the sample rate and calculates a sine wave to fill the buffer. There we go. Apply fade takes a buffer name and then a number of samples over which we are going to fade in. There we go. And if we play, we now hear a gentle fade in. All right, let's take a look at the code. Let's start with the fade first. So we'll go back to our full sign. Here is the function over here. It's quite straightforward. It's called apply fade in. It takes a buffer name as an argument and a number of samples. All right, one thing that you do need to know if you've never looked at Scheme before is this buffer name has a single quote in front of it. That is to indicate that we are after the symbol buff-1, not the variable buff-1 within the Scheme interpreter. Okay, so that's, that's what we can do instead of having to muck around with uh, quotation marks and strings in Max, which um, are kind of a pain. So we're just using a symbol name. Then we have a loop. We're using the do times macro to loop through the number of samples with an index value i. And within that, we have a let block. And this let block calculates three local variables. The first one is the envelope value for the sample we are on. So we have one divided by the number of samples times our index. That gives us our envelope value. The second one is the sample that's already in the buffer. So we read that sample with buffer ref, the buffer name, and the index point. The third is the output sample. That's simply the envelope multiplied by the previous sample. And finally, we write all this back to the buffer using the buffer set function, which is part of Scheme for Max. And that's really all there is to it. Now let's take a look briefly at the sign function. This one, we also take a named buffer, an amplitude, a frequency, and the sample rate. Likewise, we are doing a do times loop this time we loop over the entire buffer. So we use the scheme for max function buffer size to get the function, uh, the size of the buffer rather, and create a loop for that. And then we will write into the buffer. Buff S is just the short form of buffer set. A lot of the functions have short form for making uh, live coding or setting messages simpler. And we calculate the sign value for where we should be given that buffer. So we've got our two pi radians, sample rate divided by frequency, multiplied by the index, we call sine, multiply that by the overall amplitude, and write that into the buffer. There we go. And there's our fade. All right, so hopefully that was interesting and shows you how uh, succinct code can be in Scheme for working with buffers. There are a number of functions in the buffer IO API um, that we're not covering here. This, for example, is doing everything in a single call, reading one sample out of the buffer and then writing it back again. If you were going to do something that involved a lot of processing power or you wanted to speed it up, 
uh, you would use the functions that read blocks of samples from the buffer into a scheme vector and that write from a scheme vector back into the buffer. So there are a number of things you can read about in the scheme for max documentation. If you've never checked out scheme for max before, uh, follow the links at the description of the video. There is a GitHub project site where you can download scheme for max works for windows and Mac. And if you go to the project site, there are links to extensive tutorials, documentation, and even an ebook I wrote for learning S7 scheme for beginners. And this code itself is in the Scheme for Max cookbook, also linked from the same site. So I hope that was helpful and interesting. <laughs>